Okay, today's video is about whether a rocket will push itself in a vacuum. I've looked at several uh, small videos about uh, vacuum chambers, and in every single one where they say that, yeah, there was motion, the uh, chamber either pushed against a vacuum wall, uh, the rocket, or the chamber filled with fuel smoke uh, before any movement occurred. So until I see um, a rocket set off in the biggest vacuum chamber in the world, um, I say exactly what I'm about to say on the video. All right, here we go. Do rockets fly in a vacuum? Today's video is called Has a fuel propelled rocket ever been outside Earth's atmosphere. Now this is a very easy one. The answer to this is no. Now Let's just assume this is Earth. This is Earth's atmosphere. Now, Earth's atmosphere is 300 miles thick. But Put this in brackets. Normal atmosphere is only 10 miles thick, which is quite a difference. That's quite a jump of powers from 10 miles to 300. But the normal atmosphere is about 10 miles thick, and then due to the roundness of the planet as you go out everything moves apart and so everything becomes more separated now I say no a rocket has not propelled itself using fuel outside of Earth's atmosphere why is that? alright well let's look at what a rocket does let's get us a rocket Rockets do this. That, of course, is a heteromach formation of energy and matter. A standing wave. Every time it goes a little bit higher, poof, another one pops out, poof. You could say this is Jacob's ladder as well. Because this rocket is climbing on top of this matter and energy ladder. This stays at the bottom. This arrives, then this, then the next one, and it is pushing that way. Okay? So, energy and matter go one way, but energy and matter go another way now I can sit here and say energy went that way and matter went that way and why? because the only true science thing ever said is action reaction there is never an action without a reaction okay so, energy down normally means matter up. And I've shown this in my videos. If energy's going one way, matter's going another. It's just how it works. Your legs actually rotate backwards so you can move forwards. Every time you lift your leg up, it is a rotation of your leg to swing it over your shoulder. But then we lean forward and put it back down. But every time you move your leg, it is a rotation backwards over your head. Your legs move forward and back. 
So as you bring your leg forward, it should fly over the back of your head. So that's energy moving backwards, moving you matter forwards. All right, back to the Earth. Why has a fuel-propelled rocket never been outside Earth's atmosphere? Well, here's the reason. It's very, very simple, and anybody with half an education should know why. Outside the Earth is a vacuum. And in every direction, space is up. There isn't any getting away from it. It's never down. You don't fly down and out. You have to force against the Earth's atmosphere. So what's going to happen? Well, the rocket is going to shoot up to this point here. And then it's going to have a bit of momentum. And then it's going to start coming back down to the top of the atmosphere because this is a vacuum and there is no matter, no air, no nitrogen, no hydrogen, no oxygen, there is nothing that it can push against because this is what this is doing. This is very, very simple how a rocket works. It forms a heteromach formation and pushes off the ground and then pushes through the air, okay? So it doesn't matter how much thrust you got. If you actually get outside the atmosphere, you can't turn yourself around, you can't do anything. All that will happen is that this will go, your, your rocket, all that will happen is fuel will come out in every single direction. And it's not going to push against anything. So anything coming out of the atmosphere is not going anywhere because electrical gravity is also trying to pull you down. And the EM field cannot be pushed against by a rocket. See, the only way to check this would be to go to that massive vacuum chamber that um, Brian Cox likes to drop a hammer and a feather through because, you know, that's all he can do because, you know, that experiment's very, very old and he's a parrot and so he has no clue about science. He just shows boring old crap that everybody has seen and everybody knows. And to sit there and go, oh, look, I proved it, man, um, doesn't make you a scientist because somebody else already did that experiment. I'd like to see a rocket inside a vacuum chamber and I want to see it fly so if anybody can manage to get the largest uh, vacuum chamber in the world um, available to me we're gonna go inside with a couple of rockets because it should be very easy. And so if you know anybody that has anything to do with science or up in the echelons of the elite who could hire out that vacuum chamber, you now know how to check whether or not a fuel-propelled rocket has ever been outside Earth's atmosphere. And if this rocket doesn't shoot through the bloody ceiling, you know that nobody has been to the moon and nobody has been outside Earth's atmosphere. So... I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that once you've got nothing to push against, you're coming back down. It doesn't matter what you are. Propellant shouldn't work in a vacuum because you have nothing to push against. Understand? So you can't go anywhere. You can't do anything. So. I could be wrong, but I'd like to see things inside a vacuum chamber with things coming out of them to see whether or not it will move. Because if you haven't got any air to push against, then we'll find out. So even if you set up a propellant of, let's just say, compressed air, and you sit it inside that vacuum chamber on a table with a hole in the table, with the exhaust hanging out and you let that sucker go, what's going to happen? Will it go up 
or will it just fill up the vacuum space? Okay? Because we all know what happens to a gas cylinder when you knock the end off and it zooms away. But that's because it's in the atmosphere, which has got 14 pounds per square inch of air at sea level. 14 pounds. That's a lot of weight at one inch. Is that right? I think it's 14 pounds per square inch. I'm pretty sure. So, unless somebody wants to show me a canister inside a vacuum, I am correct. And no fuel propelled rocket ever made it outside Earth's atmosphere and nobody went to the moon because that old clanker had fuel propellant. So I'm very open to more information because all my information and the things that I understand and think about come from information. The more information I have the more accurate I can be within my um, papers and predictions and how things work. If I don't have enough information, then I don't know. So I'm very open to somebody saying, is the video Lee? And yeah, that, that air canister shot up in the air in a vacuum. So yeah, rocket fuel would do that. I'm quite prepared for that. But uh, as far as I'm aware of physics, nothing can move in a vacuum. Not by propellant. Because these, this heteromac formation, is building upon something. One, two, three. These stay where they are. If you've ever watched a rocket take off, at the beginning they go like that until they have enough energy on the ground and Ouroboros Taurus field that it can't push it out fast enough so it has to go this way. Because again we've got an Ouroboros Taurus wave at the bottom here. That's your rocket takeoff that I talk about in my magnetic videos. And then you get pulsed heteromac formation. So, in conclusion, I don't believe a fuel propelled rocket has ever been outside Earth's atmosphere unless it somehow managed to slingshot. Do you notice how they slingshot around things when they uh, send things off into space? That's because there's no atmosphere to push against. So they have to spin into one and fling off at a certain point to get to the next point. So right now you ain't going to Mars, you ain't going anywhere. I don't care what they say about fuel propelled rockets. You show me one in a vacuum in a vacuum cleaner, in a vacuum chamber, and uh, then I'll delete this video. All right, thanks very much. My name is Lee, I follow the Christ, and I'm telling you all about the things that he's shown and told me, and all energy knowledge leads to uh, all information, because all energy travels the same, and it travels in a double helix Ouroboros, and many waves become a heteromat standing wave, which of course is all plant life too. All right, thanks very much. Bye.